Is he that terrifying? He's much like myself, but absent my merciful nature and sense of fair play. Welcome to Singapore. Xiao Fang, he is a fish king, the king of Singapore. He lives in the East and West. The reason that the Chinese actually became pirates, they were, most of them were fishermen. And uh, the only way they could get ahead was to pirate. Who are you? Tai Fong. These are my men. They developed this kind of reputation for fierceness because they had to. It was the only way they could survive. So the only way a pirate can make a profit is by betraying other pirates. I can live with that. 海盗, 出卖海盗是正常的, That's just good business. Xiao Yang Fat is a masterful actor. He's international star. He's like the biggest movie star in China, right? So relatively, he's the biggest movie star in the whole wide world because of the amount of people, you know? He has a godlike status in that country. This is a, a mega movie star that, that we all kind of idolize him. Ready? His work is spectacular. He has a great work ethic. We worked well together. He picked things up. He had definite ideas about his character. He came in with definite things that he wanted to accomplish character-wise, and we made some adjustments to what we had laid out. <laughs> Chow Yun Fat brought his own stunt double from Hong Kong, Fai Wai Wong, I believe his name is. And they had an unusual way of working where we would demo everything with his double. And uh, I would suggest, well, you want to start working on this? And he goes, no, we'll do this at the hotel. He discovered the moments that were important to him within the choreography, within the fight, within his character. And that's what he wanted to concentrate on. But he knew it all. Elizabeth is here, I would get a tie on Billy or can touch and show you one young and you know, boy, what one cheetah. You know, other treatment would be worthy of you. Calypso. Excuse me. We are also what a title. Can I have one more, please? It's so funny because you meet this guy and he's a clown. He's like a total goofball. So I can make him back. Myself! I'm sorry. And Mark! <laughs> He made us feel comfortable, and I think that was great that he did that. Actually, he hugs all the actors, he hugs the background, he hugs Gore, he hugs everybody, and comes on set. I said, what do you want me to call you? He said, Fat Go. In China, Fat would be his first name. Go means older brother. So I thought, okay, yeah, you're my captain. Because I was a fan of 所以跟他们走在一起，就是好像那个小孩走到那个梦境里头，看到我喜欢的。所以跟他们走在一起，就是特别过瘾，特别开心。<笑>about you know how to do this beginning and um, very much and actually you know the, we have, we had this idea about the you know the hanging and the 
little boy. They're hanging everybody who's ever been associated with pirates, and they're all up there, and they, and then you know they bring them up, and there's a a, a boy from a. I mean, either that or everybody's gonna walk out of the theater in the first two minutes. This is Hans's idea. I'm not gonna take entire credit for that part, just in case everybody hates it. The king and his men stole the queen from her bed. That evening, my wife was here as well, and she's not a singer or anything, and, and we just said to her, oh, can you ju just sing, just sing like a little boy, you know? And, and, and that sort of gave us, you know, the first instinct that it could work like that, you know, it could work by, you know, a young boy singing it, and that that would be incredibly powerful. Good. Didn't suck, did it? Hoist the Colors, Gore and I wrote together. Uh, I was in London doing Batman. Gore, I have no idea, I think he was at his house. We did the whole thing over iChat. This was technology at its best. He had to start shooting, and I'm a great procrastinator, so I hadn't done anything. And I finally get this phone call going, OK, get onto your computer, get onto iChat. I have a guitar here. We're going to write this thing now. I just had a little piano in front of me and seeing him in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, we were playing around with tone. We were doing it with fiddles and accordions and what, uh, I don't know what else. What? No, no instrumentation. Oh. I'm good. just curious how it's going to sound. Just play yeah. totally solo. There's a code in the song. Huh? Yes, it, I can tell you exactly what these words are supposed to mean. We're bending and bowed her in her bones. It's about Calypso being. Uh, bound in human bound form. in human form, and they're gonna release her. All together, she's getting out of her boat. It's the colors of evil, and then a voice comes in. And beggar, never say we die. A song unites the pirates, and when you when you hear the song, all the pirates are going to get together and basically fight corporate oppression. Too long, the fate has not been in my own hands. No longer. It gives you a good protagonist. It gives you a good story. The world has become a grimmer place, and it's like a real life has caught up with us. Rise to legal counsel. Suspend it. It's just so suddenly, you know, maybe we are looking at this you know, at our silly romp in a slightly different light. I mean, that, you know, I, I'm, I'm very wary about what I'm saying here because, you know, you instantly can get very pretentious and it really wasn't meant like that. Gentlemen, hoist the colors. Hoist the colors. It reminds them yeah. that, you know, let's not die in silence. Right. And, and then, then someone then else straight. starts humming it, and someone else starts humming, the whole crowd starts singing it. Yeah. And, the, and, then it and the Redcoats are, you know, the East Indian Trading Company guys are like, what's happening here, you know? And they're marching up. Now they're, instead of scared, they're defiant. You can kill me, but the spirit of piracy is going to be here and to plague you forever. just said, you know, how do we keep it unexpected? And we said, let's just get weird. Jack Sparrow is commanding a ship of 100 Jack Sparrows. And it's what we call a multiple Jack sequence, where Johnny plays many versions of Jack Sparrow throughout the ship. Oh! All the sheets handsomely, boys! Scandalize the team! It's like slicing him up into, pie, into a pie, in a way, you know? And the major ingredients of that person, you know? have been separated. So you get the extreme version of fear, rage and aggression, anger. It was a great challenge, you know. We have lost speed and therefore time, precious time, which cannot be recovered once lost. Do you understand? It's just keeping a line on what particular version of Captain Jack, you know, keeping a handle on that and then making it different. Help. 
Johnny would play himself in many ways. So you had to rehearse the entire sequence, character by character, and then lay in the different Johnnies or different Jacks. Four goes, five, six, and five. Initially, it was shot with another actor reading the off-screen line, the Alba Jack lines, so the, the rhythm could be dis determined with another actor. Mr. Sparrow. I can. What say you about the condition of this tech line? What was really, really helpful was on the day when they were able to do these kind of uh, ghost mix where you see the two Jacks interact and they add the third and the image fades a little bit more, but you get to see the interaction between the three. When you see it's working, that it juices you up, you know. Let's try one more. Action! It's tedious. Inch back a little bit on the mark. How's speed. Action! Tedious. Let's just shoot one more real quick. The camera's just repeating the same move over and over. Well, it takes forever. That goes to the record books as one of the weirder days. You know, he has the opportunity to, to be a bunch of different characters in this, and and he has to has these voices that are he's constantly responding to. So, he even makes them more engaging. That. Uh, you get more and more of Jack in this one. Slag and braces! Our captain! Slag and braces! Step lively! Gore and Johnny had so much fun coming up with these little vignettes of the multiple Jacks throughout the sequence. Chicken Man is one of our favorites, I think. He has balance issues. Subtle. There are 12 identical Jack Sparrows. This is Jack. Jack Sparrow 3. We've had eight or nine of them walking around identically dressed at any time. Well, it wasn't distracting at all. Captain Jack Sparrow, mate. Yeah. No, I'm Jack Sparrow. I'm sensing a lot of deja vu at the moment. <laughs> it's also quite funny to be on the lot when they're shooting this scene because they had about 10 or 15 guys dressed up like Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. I'm probably Jack farthest from the camera. You could walk onto the stage and think you were going crazy. This is going a little, uh, a little. I'm Jack. I'm one of five Jacks. I'm Spartacus. One of our three versions of multiple Jacks in the story is the two little Jacks on the shoulder of Johnny. We created a large dreadlock set, which was in essence his wig. When Gore first told me about the dreadlock set, it sounded like a really cool idea, and we did a number of different versions of beads in here until we got it right for him. If you lean out and kick your feet, you know, if it's one of those kind of things, yeah. Even, you know what might sell it best? His rotation. This way, Johnny had something to do interact with. He had a dreadlock to interact with. He can actually push, at times he wanted the little Johnny to push through dreadlocks to appear. He'd be hanging from a dreadlock. He'd be swinging. I feel good. I like it. The thing is, people are leaving the body. The immortal Captain Sparrow. What about that? All the reactions had to be quite different. You know, different levels for all these different characters that I played. I enjoyed it. I mean, you know, it was a lot of fun to play. Gentlemen, I wash my hands of this weirdness. Like when we get into the lines. I think this should just all be the effects, don't you? Is that what you want in there? Yes. Here we go. Hines is another one of those artists that always comes up with something fresh and unique and different. He's a you know a brilliant composer who has these wonderful melodies in his head. You look at the pirate's theme, which you hear everywhere now. And for the third one, he created a whole bunch of new themes. Play the downbeat of 180. Hans has developed new themes for each of the subsequent films. Some of those themes carry into the third film that were developed for Pirates 2. There are lots of brand new themes. I sat down and wrote over an hour's worth of new tunes. You know, it's, it's the third one, so we want to do a really good job, and we have all these ideas that we've been talking about for, what, three years or so. It could Abstract. be sweet and synthetically with a, yeah. you know, a, a, yeah. a detuned piano. Yeah. Like one, you know, the bow. Yeah. There's a far more eclectic sort of um, landscape to the movie. 
I think that's part of the strength of these movies, that we keep showing you worlds that you've never quite seen before. And we give you sounds that you've never heard before. OK, this part of our meeting is come up with ideas about other instruments. Since I already said things like banjo, it should open it up to that anything stupid you say will be hailed as a masterpiece. I mean, don't be shy. I just think we can take it a lot further than the last movie. On this one, I'm far more active with using instruments that aren't part of the orchestra. So it does feel more like a journey, like you're truly going to the end of the world and beyond. This next thing is like the big theme for the okay. <laughs> The love theme? The, well, it's actually the... It is the, the theme of the whole movie. Yeah. So, uh, a world premiere, as it were. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think which is different in this movie that we found a theme that binds the movie together, that takes you on this journey. At the same time, I think all journeys are inherently romantic. And so, yes, I am using it for, I'm using it as a love theme. If you ever analyze it, you know, there's a, like a twist of the Johnny theme in it, which is counter-imposed against the, the main notes of all the other themes tumbling down into hell, da 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 By the time I put this in front of the orchestra, all I'm worried about is this, that it's unplayable or it'll sound like nothing that I imagined in my head. And so it's really them that remind me, you know, after they've done a take where I was just holding my breath, you know, hoping my heart won't stop, hope there weren't any horrible accidents going to happen out there, uh, that I can hear them having enjoyed it. I can go, oh, OK, I've written something that they actually can get their teeth into, and it elevates it, elevates it straight away because they can find a, some sort of an emotional connection. That's why I love working with musicians, because that's what they do. They, they give you the gift of their heart. Yeah, 25. Is that, uh, well, you said to play out, we can do that. Da, 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 da. You could just let it sing more, the whole thing. It's wonderful to watch him when he has, you know, 80 musicians and how he talks to each individual violinist to tell him exactly the pitch and the tone and the feeling that he wants. And then you add in the editors to a director who is as brilliant as Gore Verbinski. It makes it all kind of come together. I actually was like, where is the death toll? Right. Because we had talked about that because pants. Because it's so low. Yeah. It's and like, I was like, so oh, it's there, but it, you know, right. I, I know I'm searching for it. The reason I didn't want to be in rock and roll anymore or didn't want to be in a band anymore is because all you do is you talk about music. But what happens with filmmakers is very often they will ask or describe something in a way that has nothing to do with, you know, the language of music, but it sparks notes in you straight away. It, right, More those couple units could of, come yeah. in and... But we have a bong into it. Yeah, we've had a wonderful, like, dialogue with music throughout um, the cutting process with uh, the composer Hans Zimmer just down the hall. When they start hanging is when it's, it started suspending. I think right? you're right. Yeah. yeah. We'd be able to get tracks into the system, talk about them, have meetings. He'd make adjustments and we'd get adjusted versions. It really helps to kind of pre-visualize how you know, the where finished we, film will be. Right, where we're going with it. It depends on the background play, but it seems like we could take a tail trim on the end of that shot. The avid and electronic editing has made me rethink how we do it. And rather than starting at the end of a project, why not start at the beginning while they're shooting? And why not start giving the editors music early because it will inspire them and things will come together and you very quickly find out what doesn't work as well. I'm saying I can play any tune through that texture. I just like the high thing and... Uh, oh, I think uh, if, 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 if you end more. up doing it, da-da-da. Yeah. 
use that instead of... Uh, uh, the, yeah. Some of these things go completely wrong. We have, you know, I mean, you know, this is the stuff we never talk about. When you write something and you, you know, you really believe in it and it goes completely wrong. The descending into the splash, yeah. sort of feels like it's working, and then it goes da 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 So it kind of womp, 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 instead of da 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 That Gork doesn't stand up in the middle of this and go, oh my god, you're ruining my movie. You know, I mean, I think that takes character. <laughs> I met Gore when he was doing Mouse Hunt, and um, we did Weatherman together, Pirates 2. This is, this is the Zimmer process. We were in a room waiting. That's fine. And he's right hey, on the Casio. what do you think Casio. about this for Jack? No, I think it's good. Let's get it. It really isn't a shorthand with Gore because he's a stickler for, for detail. All that happens is, is that I try to outdo him with detail. I try to go even crazier on my orchestration, or, you know, I try to find a musician in Mongolia that he guaranteed hasn't heard of, or something like that. So we have all these these cultural references and, you know, our Fellini movies, Armour Chord, and we analyze things to great levels, but the, the form of it, I think, is good. Yeah, but those, that's going to work, right? The, right. I know the cross. Right. That's what makes it so fun for me, because I'm dealing with somebody who understands my obsession about certain things and who who's, seems to have a similar taste. <laughs> We're just about to record Gore Verbinski playing the guitar. Why is he playing the guitar? Number one, because the part was written for him. Number two, because he can. Number three, because it's probably going to save the movie. And number four, because we're a little, we're getting a little low on budget. He's a really good guitar player. Um, actually, it was, it was interesting to do this sort of role reversal where uh, you know, suddenly I was the director, and he was reacting the way I was reacting, by being insecure. It's too much gain, huh? The headphones are too hot now. I mean, I can't get any more distortion. No, but we, everything's we, on we He was saying, look, if it's no good, you can get somebody else. Look, I've said that to him a thousand times. I'm loving that I don't have to fire you. It's great. <laughs> Actually, Gore gave me a big gift at the end of the last movie, and he doesn't even know this. He said to Melissa, our music supervisor, he said, when Hans sits down and just plays his moody chord, something special happens. And I forgot, when I play really simply, it's very effective, you know, that, but there's a thing that happens, you know, where, you know, you get carried away with all the stuff on the screen and you start to get complicated. You know, he just reminded me, you know, if I just do hands, simple, moody, you know, German. It's very effective, it's very emotional. Three or four notes can make a, a brilliant melody, and that's what I believe in. I believe in very simple, strong melodies. I do think we have a sound that nobody else has, and nobody else had, and even though it's humorous, it's pretty tough. I thought, we were gonna make the Bikers Pirate movie. I was substituting the ships for Harley Davidson motorcycles in my mind. So there's always a rock and roll sensibility in it. Hans has done a magnificent job to create probably the boldest and most romantic uh, uh, themes. An yeah. Epic sounding score. I never forget what a great opportunity I have. People are asking me to write music. Wow, this is what I wanted my life to be about. So, you know, lucky me. Thank you. <laughs>